Patellar tendinopathy, the knee pain. What shoes do you recommend? Does jumping literally help build strength in your legs? I'm talking literally just jumping. So if you have a super strong posterior chain, but really weak quads and calves, you're gonna have so much power being generated, but then it might be too much on your knee. Every single day is another step in the process, but the process is progress and progress is the process. So no matter where you're at in your process, it is progress. <coughs> What is good? Welcome back to Dunk Tip Tuesday. Today we're going live on Instagram right here. If you're watching on Instagram, this will be posted on YouTube in my podcast. Today I want to talk about key muscles you need to work on to jump higher. And so I'm going to answer some questions. Thank you for all the comments. We're going to go through the comments of the week as well. Here we go. I got some fantastic comments. We got Brandon Terry, Jack Ricketts. How is this guy not lost vertical because of COVID, but hasn't gotten a 10 foot East Bay? Great question. It's just, I need to jump higher. That level's where I'm at. That's why I'm doing this whole long phase of the yoga to unlock my body, then length through strength, strength through length, and then the phase of jumping higher than ever. Well, what's up to Instagram going live right here? Shout out to everybody there. And uh, yeah, what else? Live in legend and also leave your comments on YouTube for me to know what topics to cover next week. That's why I'm doing this one because I got a lot of people asking me how to get your body lean, but also how to strengthen your body to get higher. So let's get into it. These comments are amazing, by the way. Balanced meals does work. A Red Bull and a Stephen Selly video. Now I'm ready to jump. Let's go. Tyrone Davis. I bet you pronounced my last name wrong. William Scarcia. That's easy. Come on. Habits are momentum. If you don't do the right thing yesterday, but you did it today, you are infinitely more likely to do it again tomorrow learn this from keegan smith that's awesome pete s all right so in the chat we got in the instagram we got best workout for pate patellar tendinopathy and real quick if you're watching this on youtube i'm going live on instagram but this is where i'm going to be posting everything so stay tuned patellar tendinopathy the knee pain what you want to do for that is slowly regress till there's no pain even if that means resting and then slowly do isometrics and do that very very gradually so every time you do it try start with one day a week then up it give yourself two days of rest then slowly increase those isometrics the weight and the time you're holding it and then slowly increase the range of motion and i have a whole video on that and just keep going that way and you have to understand range of motion and speed because the faster you move the more tension so it's basically just understanding tension that you're causing on the tendon and slowly add more and more tension very very slowly one variable at a time and you'll be able to jump like me on concrete no pain, pain-free off one leg. Let's go. Okay, next question. I'm going to go through a couple questions. What shoes do you recommend? So the shoes that I recommend are light, grippy, and I like ankle mobility. So I wouldn't go with anything that uh, restricts my ankles because I used to have bad ankle pain and sprain my ankle all the time but now that i allowed my ankles to get stronger and more mobile now the low tops are actually helping my ankles get stronger because every time i play every time i jump they're getting worked i'm not neglecting those muscles this is kind of on today's topic and then i'm going to get into the three keys does jumping literally help build strength in your legs i'm talking literally just jumping yes so you're going to be using your muscles if you're jumping a lot and you're jumping your hardest, you're going to have to build strength because your body's trying to react to that. And there's a big understanding of what you're stimulating in your legs. So if you're jumping jump rope, that's why people ask about jump rope over and over and over again. You're not really trying to jump higher. You're just jumping over and over and over again. You're more conditioning your muscles. So the, it, the, the term strength needs to be defined too. Are you going to be able to lift more weight? If you just started jump roping, yes, you'll probably be able to get stronger muscles. But if you're doing jump roping over and over and over, it's not going to be stimulating you to get stronger, but it is going to allow you to jump more and longer because you're doing endurance. But if you do something like a standstill jump and you do max jumps from a standstill, that's going to add a little bit more strength. But at the same time, you're going to have to add more resistance at some point. So maybe you do seated jumps if you don't have weights, but then also you're going to want to start adding some kind of weights to get stronger. So the three keys for jumping higher. The first one is your core. I think that goes really underrated. It really needs to be solid and there's different ways to work it. It's not just doing crunches, but you want it to be lean. You want it to be strong and you want to hit top to bottom because it's really easy to get the upper abs, but you really want to hit the lower abs because that hits that psoas muscle that connects to your hips. So if you have that balance there, which leads me to my next point of balance, if you're able to get that balance in there, your hips will work properly. And then the hips, when you lift up your knee, that's using those lower abs. So you really want to hit those lower abs and those deep muscles so that your hips are healthy and you can get in there and you could really utilize your legs. That leads me to my next point of balance. 
a really big key when it comes to training is balanced muscles. So you want to lift correctly, which is the last point. So lifting correctly allows you to hit the right muscles you want to hit. And I would say that the key muscles you want to hit with your body to jump higher are the posterior chain, your butt, your hamstrings, your calves. That's where all the power comes from, but you still need the balance. So I don't want you to just con completely develop those things and neglect your quads and your front, even your tibialis in the front of your leg because you need those as well. And the other thing you need them for is the balance because if you have imbalances, you're going to get tight, which is my problem. It leads to injuries. And then you're not going to be able to be the strongest you could possibly be because you're going to be imbalanced. Think of those imbalances as just blockages in your body. So if you have a super strong posterior chain but really weak quads and calves, you're going to have so much power being generated, but then it might be too much on your knee because a lot of the knee comes from the strong quads, strong VMOs, and strong tibialis, right? That It's putting too much tension on your knee. That's why there's a lot of knee pain. So if you can develop your quads up and develop your front of your leg as well, it'll help you uh, use that power. And then the last part about it is lifting correctly. If you're balanced and you're hitting that psoas muscle like I'm talking about, you have healthy hips, you have strong quads as well, you're going to be able to lengthen through the other movements because trying to get into deeper ranges of motion requires the balance of muscles to pull each other apart. It's not just stretching when you're stretching, it's using other muscles to pull you into that stretch that, that counter it. So when you're lifting correctly, now you have the length you need, the strength through the entire muscle, and you're lifting correctly so you're not getting injured, and you're able, you're building a solid, solid foundation. So I'd rather you go through the range of motion, depth, and do all the details first so that way you can build up every ounce of that muscle that you have in your body. And of course, all your whole body's being used, but that's why I wanted to give some details today for pieces that I think people miss is a big part of it is your your, your butt and your hamstrings. And we don't see hamstrings being flexed, although I might be a hamstring flexor coming soon once I get them shredded. But like the quads look good. You're taking mirror pictures. The calves look good, right? The abs look good. But the booty and the hamstring, as a guy at least, we're not showing that off. But those are where the power comes from. That's where you're exploding from. That's where your body is going to get its power. So definitely need to develop that. Stay balanced. Focus on lifting correctly first when you're in the lifting phase and hit that core, hit those deep muscles, stay balanced through the whole core and use everything because everything is being used in your body. So you want it to be the most in tune you can head to toe. And you know I love to talk about the mindset. That's also another part of it. But those are the key muscles you want to hit. Get bouncy, get powerful, and I'll see you next week. Let me know what you thought about this. Let me know what you want to see next week. Let me know what you want me to yell about. Leave a comment for me to get hype. All these let's go comments are freaking hyping me up. Have a great Dunk Tip Tuesday. Every single day we're working. Every single day is another step in the process, but the process is progress and progress is the process. So no matter where you're at in your process, it is progress. You're constantly making progress. And if you can enjoy that, you enjoy the now, you're the most effective you could possibly be in the now and all your attention's in this now so you can do the best workout today, every movement, and that long-term progress will be yours. I'll see you next week. Let's go. And that's how you do it.